Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host Calder Ness. This episode, we're going to be talking a little bit about the martial artist keyword and all the cool happenings in the world of Hero Clicks. This is episode 505. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks help. I have the high ground. Oh yeah, you may have the high ground. It's over, Simeon. Yeah. Instant deadpan. Oh, how do six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny? I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fool. So you'll be able to make that out. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make hero clicks like that for everyone. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your Hero Clicks order. Actually, anything. Anything and everything, actually, on Cool Stuff Inc. That's actually pretty cool. And if you go to shop.wizkids.com, you can use code DIALH10, D-I-A-L-H-10, for 10% off your Hero Clicks order, not available on certain promotions and pre-order items. Joining me always in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, man? Oh, you know, we survive till yet another day. Very true. Through this cold and treacherous winter month, where it has once again snowed in Omaha, once again dropped below 30. Hasn't it actually hasn't been that bad? But uh, it's not. It's just kind of like a reminder. Oh, hey guys, remember it's uh it's winter. That's really about it. Like it's not bad. It's like oh, there's just kind of snow now. Yeah. I guess it's. I think that's just Nebraska. It's like check yourself. Remember winter? <laughs> and it was like I thought it was sixty the other day, and it's like yeah, you thought, didn't you? Like that just seems like Nebraska my whole life. It's always like here's a little bit of spring. Psych. Just wait, boy. That's that's Just Nebraska. Wait, boy, talking to me. Yeah, every year. Is that what Nebraska sounds like? Yeah, ne- Nebraska sounds like uh, Big D Trap Daddy. It's corn oh, country. No, 42%. no, Southside no, no, <laughs> no. Oh, yikes, Simeon! What made you happy this week, and why is it Madam Web? <laughs> oh, I haven't seen Madam Web. I, really I haven't wish, seen it yet. I haven't uh, seen it yet either. I almost said I really wish I have, but uh, I'm actually just gonna straight up wait till it's on like Disney Plus or something, whatever, whatever channel it ends up oh, on. Sure. I don't know. It's not Disney, so uh, it looks fun. I think it's weird that Ezekiel Sims or what? That's who it is, oh, yeah. right? That's the bad guy. I think it's weird that he's the bad guy, and I see what they're going for with like the whole like connecting the webs and stuff. Um, I just not super interested i think it's gonna be great like i think it's gonna be really fun in the same way that i personally think morbius was a lot of fun and i don't think a movie has to be like a cinematic masterpiece to be fun and like watchable but i i think it'll be better than morbius and yet somehow still more disappointing than i want it to be i don't know i'm gonna be honest i did not know ezekiel sims was uh supposed to be the bad guy i know i saw like probably a version of him in the trailer slash promotional art uh morbius i was i don't know i was more excited for morbius than i am madam web but i still like the idea of madam web so i, do I guess we'll have to see i think the the biggest reason i'm like not fully for it is because it's like it still is an mcu spider verse you know, like you guys are making like your own Spider Verse in like the Sony Verse or whatever it is, right? And it's still not MCU Spider Man adjacent. So it's like, what does this even tie? Like this ties into Venom and Craven and like the other stuff that will come down the pipeline for this specific universe. But I just, at this point in life, I just want a cohesive universe. I just want, uh, you know, I want all my dogs in Paw Patrol. I want all my boots and maps and Dora the Explorer, and I just want all my Spider-Mans and Spider-Jason characters in their own universe. I don't care if it's Disney or not. Like, I just want them all in the one place. I, I'm tired of, like, we can't, we can't say the Peter Parker word. I don't know. Sure. But anyhow, what, what made yeah. me happy this week was I went and saw Willie Carlisle. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was Friday night, and... 
man, he, he did more of his new stuff, which I'm not sad about because I've been enjoying the new uh, album, Critter Land. It's a lot sadder than like most Willie stuff, but all of his stuff is kind of sad because it's, uh, it's, like, it's folk music. It's not meant to be upbeat and like cheerful kind of things, you know. It's meant to be, you know, the the songs of the people and the stories of like the land kind of stuff. So, I uh, I enjoyed his show. He closed out with like one of his his kind of like typical bangers, which was uh, "Hearts a Big Tent." I put that up on my stories, which is like the first time I've posted anything on uh, Facebook in a long time. But that's a great song. And then uh, Ken Pomeroy the name of the band or the lady i'm not really sure uh the opening act and holy cow like i cannot express enough how much this lady's like voice uh apparently she or one of her songs was used to close out reservoir dogs like one of the oh. episodes or seasons of reservoir dogs uh and the song was cicadas by ken pomeroy but like absolutely give that a listen um what an incredible voice like Regina Spector slash, uh, gosh, kind of like a Stevie Nicks, like a a very deep, like throaty kind of like tone. But mm. yeah, they they opened for Willie, and that was an awesome. They did an awesome job. That was really fun. Um, met some dudes from Des Moines that were just like chilling and having a great time during like the whole thing. And then the best part, well, not the best part. The best part was all the music. But one of my favorite parts of the night was um, the fiddler happened to be just like a real kind of like short in stature lady. Uh, you know, wax woman and her did a uh, height check, I guess, at the end of the show. <laughs> yeah. So I have video of the, the height check and oh. Willie like came up and checked. I was taking like the picture and he like came up and like peered behind the camera to see to like double check the height check and then i got to talking to him and uh i don't think i don't think you'll believe it i don't okay i really don't i might guess, not guess what willie used to play back in the day no 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 impossible no. not okay no Okay. Not Heroclix, no. Okay, that's instantly where my brain went, and I was but like, I, there is actually no way. Yeah, um, I, I know. That would have been uh, like just like insane. But uh, I would be, I would be like, he, this is unreal. What, what did he to use him, to play? Uh, like, did, don't just say like D and D, like a safe one. Do you play a little D and D? D and D. That's. I mean, I assume so. Like we didn't get to like that deep oh, okay. conversation about it, but I assume probably at some point he has. Uh, but I, I said. Hey man, I shout you on, out on the podcast like every chance I get, and he's like, "Oh, what podcast?" And I was like, "Ah, here we go." Yeah, it's a hero click podcast. <laughs> no, I was like, ah, "It's like for a tabletop game that's like you know like, like little miniatures, like they're little heroes, and like it's kind of like hero clicks chess or like hero chess, you know, kind of thing." Right. And he was like, "Oh, like I used to play Mage Knight back in the day," and I was like, "What? Oh, what? Mage Knight." Oh, dang. So, yeah, Willie used to Very play. closely related. Yeah. Okay. The, like, one of the precursors, you might say, to uh, some Heroclix sets and stuff. So, yeah, that was really fun. That was really cool. And I walked away just kind of, like, beaming. Like, Willie played. He, he turned dials at one point. Like, he turned dials. <laughs> he rolled dice and turned dials. Like, that is even hilarious. though it wasn't Heroclix, like, ooh, boy. Uh,. <laughs> No, it was it was really fun though. It was uh, Willie's always a good time. He's down in Kansas City, adjacent right now. So, uh, just finishing out the last legs of their tour. But man, I was looking at the tour and like Omaha, like they had they had Ken Pomeroy, which great band, great. I, I don't know if that's the the main singers. I don't know if that's her name or if that's the band's name. I don't know. I feel bad, but uh, that was the opening act. Uh, but prior to the opening act um and like some of their other some of the other venues that he played he had some really like fun opening acts and like uh other bands and stuff that were playing so it was i don't know cool cool venue it was yeah. at the uh the slowdown which is downtown omaha not my favorite venue for music but 
it's funny how many times I see the same people at these venues. It's just like, oh, yeah. I'm like, I, I don't know if it, like they're just like also Willie Carlisle fans or if they just go to like every music act that comes to Omaha. Like I can't tell, but um, either way, pretty fun. That is seriously cool, man. I love that. Like, not only is he like cool, hanging out, chilling, chatting with everybody. But also turn dials. Oh, Mage Knight action? All right. I imagine, like, yeah, though, a lot of, like, would you say, like, the usual suspects kind of just show up to shows like that, especially yeah, in Omaha, which kind of gets smaller the longer. There's this one I'm chick here, that's, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on limb and call her chick. Um, I feel like that's yeah. a open to interpretation, like, friendly enough uh, name. Um, sure. She wears a cowboy hat that's got, like, the brim is... Um, totally flat. No, uh, it's oh, okay. uh, crimped with beer caps, like the caps from beer bottles. Oh. And then uh, it's got, like, bones, like, mixed in with, like, you know, you've, your hat's got, like, the horse hair kind of thing. Hers is, like, hair, but also, like, interlaced with bone and uh, teeth and random stuff. And yeah. I've seen her and... Um, the, the same guy, which this time he was wearing a much different outfit than I saw him last time, but I've seen her and the same guy together at quite a few kind of like, I, I don't know. I'll say, I don't want to say punk shows cause they're not punk shows. They're, they're just like uh, smaller venue shows. Um, and th- it's almost like they're doing like coverage, but they're also like enjoying themselves. So it's not like paid coverage but they do a lot of pictures and stuff at each show so i've seen them i've seen gosh there's like a handful of people where like every time i'm like in one of these venues i'm like do you just go to this venue every time there's someone here or is it like specifically just like i don't know you know if you if you go a place and you see somebody every time you go that place you have to wonder are you only coming the same times i am or are you just always here and sometimes Mm. i come here you know it's that kind of feeling, but with like no, ten, you ten different people. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what you mean. It's just like a little too, a little too consistent. And or like, are they thinking the same thing? Man, that guy was like the beard and glasses guy. He's always here. <laughs> what in the world? Oh, there's there's flannel beard and glasses guy again. Yeah, he sticks out like a sore thumb in this area. <laughs> I never see anyone <laughs> wear a flannel and have a beard in glasses. Uh, that was one of Ken Pomeroy's songs. Uh. Was, uh, flannel cowboy, it's a good song. Oh really? Yeah. Oh nice. Cicadas, flannel cowboy. I'm gonna I'm gonna name off some songs that you guys should listen to. Uh, Cicadas was the one that apparently played at the end of Reservoir Dogs, or I think it was Reservoir Dogs. I don't know. I looked it up on YouTube. All the comments were like, Reservoir Dogs brought me here. Um, and I was like, Willie, Willie Carlisle brought me here. <laughs> it's funny. I was going to start a fight in the comment section there. but Oh, gosh. Classic. Instead, Classic I'm just going to start Indian. fights in HC Realms comment sections. Let me. Yeah, that's refresh, right. Refresh. Look. No, Sivian, no. no. No reply yet. <sighs> we have until the end of the show. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Oh, uh, gosh. Well. Well, maybe happy this last weekend was just driving, just going around. I went up to Sioux Falls this weekend, played Hero Clicks with the fellas, hung out, got to chill with them, got to see the classic Sioux Falls venue up at Rainbow Comics, Cards, and Collectibles. Filmed a video that'll be up on the channel later this week with super fan Tristan Halverson. It was pretty Ooh. fun. I really, I really enjoyed it. I think it'll be a fun kind of video series. I think people can get a lot out of. I think it'll be pretty cool. I really Uh, enjoyed his kind of pseudo threat that he had all of our signatures now. Yes, that was interesting. Mm, It was very Mm. interesting. (laughs) Yes, yes, indeed. He was like, "Ooh, I can now forge your signatures," and I'm like, "Oh, oh no, (laughs) okay." (laughs) Yeah. So. That was all in good fun, I'm sure. All in good fun. Uh, what really made me happy was, though, he had brought... I, I had commissioned this from his, uh, from the person that makes his forks. I guess it's his mom. His mom knits these little frog crocheted characters oh, yeah. the that fork. he calls a fork. The fork, right? Yeah, fork and I was like, if she could make a fork, that'd be really cool. 
uh, for me because I think I think it'd be really fun. I really like them. And he was like, well, like, what color do you want a sweater to be? And I'm like, I'd be really cool if it was like red, white and blue or Captain America E or something. Uh, and she went above and beyond. I might have to post a picture with the four. Actually, you'll see it in the video that we do. Um, but the Ford not only has a red, white, and blue sweater, but she got even smaller yarn or something. I don't know how crocheting or any of this stuff works. And made him a little shield on the front of his sweater, a little Captain America shield oh, wow. on the front. Simeon, it gets even better. She also made him a crocheted actual shield that you can put around his arm with like <laughs> little stretchy straps and stuff. And it's like, this is so precious. And she has a little cowboy hat for him. And I'm like, oh my goodness, cuteness overload. I love it. He's coming with me everywhere and forever. I love my Ford. So shout out Tristan. Shout out Tristan's mom. Incredible. Absolutely loved it. There's it's a reason he's a super beautiful. fan. Exactly. And entirely because his mom. Yeah. Yeah. Not at all because of his own deeds. No, 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 no. Not at all. Not at all. Purely, purely because that his mom is so cool. So yeah. Shout out Tristan. Shout out Mrs. Halverson. You guys are you guys are great. So yeah. And then I also went and shot a short film for a forty eight hour film festival in Brookings, South Dakota, Saturday. That was a lot of fun. Got a chat with a lot of people. Uh, one of my fellow co-stars was a massive, like, Evil Dead, Army of Darkness, like Bruce Campbell, Ash Williams fans. Like, that was just a ton of fun, hanging out and chatting that with everybody. And, of course, we got done filming at around 10 o'clock, and I was able to leave Brookings by about 10.30 and begin the uh, three-and-a-half-ish hour drive back to Omaha. So getting back to Omaha last night at 2 a.m. after a... Uh, nine thirty call time of uh, filming uh, it was pretty fun. It was a pretty fun drive. I won't lie. Always tried, uh, you know. You know, had a had a couple energy drinks, had a couple uh, uh cold brew coffees, and and we were running on something else to get us back down here and rightfully passed out uh, <laughs> for it. How Skipping you, hero clicks today, so I could pass out again. Energy drinks. How do you feel about C four? I don't I don't quite like C4. They make me a little too too jittery. Jittery. Yeah, it's right. the right. I don't know what what it's it's got like the cuz C4 is like a pre-workout normally yeah. and then they made energy drinks and it still has that pre-workout feel where it's like ah my there's spiders under my skin, like, you know, yeah, like, like, like your I need to itchy. sprint right now. <laughs> like, yeah, like I've got a moments after yeah. ingestion. Yeah. Uh, they have a pink. St- I don't know how you feel about pink Starburst, but they have a pink Starburst and a red Starburst flavor. Ooh, okay. and I saw when I was in the hospital. I saw it in the vending machine, the pink Starburst, and I was like, "That has tre- intrigued me." Like I, I personally consume too much caffeine, as is uh, some would say, like an unhealthy amount, and that is just you know, <laughs> doctors, lawyers, um, something that's like any anyone of of any kind of medical ilk uh, would say that's an unhealthy amount of coffee that I consume, but I'm intrigued by this pink starburst caffeine drink. And uh, yeah, I haven't taken pre-workout. I used to take pre-workout like fairly regularly. And then I realized that like a single cup of coffee and a banana was like the right amount. That was like the perfect amount of energy, pepness and, uh, get through like the workout kind of like whatever uh, energy um, for me. But like most pre-workouts are just like, ooh, I'm so jazzed. Do I want to throw up? Do I want to like do a pull-up? I don't know. It's kind of crazy right now in my head. Yeah. This is insane. And like most pre-workouts are like, yeah, that, but double. And like Kinda, BCAAs yeah. are like, what if like your veins were twice as thick and could pump twice as much blood? Would that be exciting? And I'm just like, ooh, that's terrifying. I don't know if I'm dying or not, but here we go. <laughs> like, but no, the the C4 uh, Pink Starburst. I I am gonna give it a try. There you go. I, Those are the best Starburst flavors, though, pink and red. I so. think I feel like that's. That's just like a, a known quantity. I don't think there's yeah. anyone that argues pink Starburst are the best. Yet Starburst continues to make some mixed bags where it's just, you know, 
One of so, these days they'll stop making yellow. Yeah, orange is also great, but they got to stop making yellow. I, That's well, and my stop. my theory is like you got to have a little good with the bad, otherwise the good just doesn't taste as good. So like that's fair. You got to have to have dessert that tastes good. You got to have like the dry meatloaf first kind of thing sometimes. Right. And so it's like if the meatloaf wasn't dry and like the the actual portions were like you know just delicious you would never want the dessert. So it's like, I need the, uh, the little bit of, I don't know, less tangible, less, less wantable kind of stuff okay. so that the dessert is good. And that, yeah, the, the pink starburst is that in the bag of starburst, but right I do on. kind of sometimes wish they had just a pack of pink starburst. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think 20 or so minutes of not hero clicks is enough. And I suppose, I guess, I guess now, I guess we can talk about Hero Clicks on this Hero Clicks podcast. Not a lot going on though this week. Not a crazy amount of stuff. We do have some more fan surveys, ladies and gentlemen, that I would recommend you check out. The one on February 16th. Uh, that one specifically asked about what you would like to see in the next Marvel set. Simeon, did you did you fill out the survey? Do you have any Marvel ideas for this one? I, to, I have uh, not filled out for yet. Account? Okay, I filled out the previous one, um, but yeah, this one is uh, where do you live? Who is your dad? What does he do? Um, yes, no, it's, uh, right. Of course. Where do you mainly play Hero Clicks? How many points do you prefer to play? What terrain or terrain features would you like to see in upcoming products? What themes and characters would you like to see in the next Marvel Hero Clicks set? So themes and characters would you like to see? Uh, and then is there anything else you'd like to tell us? Which I'm sure most the average Hero Clicks player has plenty to tell them. I bet, yes, absolutely. I haven't, they probably do. No, I haven't filled this one out. I filled out the previous one, the previous fan. Uh, well, this one was uh, added to... Yeah, this one was the one that was added to Ryan Opalk's post. The right. last one that I filled out was the dude who won the fan survey. Let's see. Um... The, the neighborhood intern. That's who it was. That's uh, the yes. last one I filled out. That was February 7th. I really like that they're doing these surveys. And from what we love have been able to tell, they are reading through them. They are, like, paying attention. But a good plan of action if you're filling these surveys out is to do them accurately. So if they're asking for a Marvel theme, then type in, like, a Mar like answer with a Marvel theme. If they're asking about terrain, then... Tell them like accurately like what you want because they're probably going to ignore it if it's not accurate to like what the question right. is. So, from like what we've been able to like ascertain, that's like the the best thing to do is like, you know, if you want to put like parts unknown for where do you live, that's probably fine. Um, but be as specific and as accurate as you can be with the rest of the information as to the question. Uh, if you say. I don't know if you say like I'd really like to see the next Marvel Hero Click set be uh, One Punch Man. Probably not. Probably not yeah. going to get a. There's no yeah. tick mark on that that ticket. You know, they're, they're just going to bypass that. They're going to say, well, eh, that person didn't fill that out right. But, I mean, do what you want to do. Yeah. Be true to yourself. Exactly. Uh, so actually, talking about the Ryan Opal post here. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll give that a little read. So it says, Greetings, Clicks community. My name is Ryan Opal. I hope I'm saying that right. And I recently joined the WizKids team with the sole goal of ramping up our organized play and events marketing efforts. I have 11 years of experience working as a contractor for Gen Con's marketing department, but I also bring two decades of experience as a competitive gamer, mostly TCGs to tabletop to table as well. I can't overstate how excited I am to get to know this community and help grow and develop programs all over the country and the world. If you're attending conventions this year, including the upcoming Adepticon event, please stop by the tournament area and say hello. Oh, man, he's going to get bombarded with stuff at Adepticon. Just throwing it out there. Oh, boy. Uh, and if you or... If you are or know a retailer or a tournament organizer that would like to ramp up their WizKids events, I'd love to hear from you, too. Please fill out the form link, and I'll begin discussion with you shortly on how we can begin incorporating your feedback into future organized play programming. 
So a lot of people talking about when are WKOs coming back? When is this organized play coming? When is this, this, that, and the other thing? And it's like, not only is there a plan for organized play, but we've got a dedicated dude for it. Yeah. Awesome. Love it. Perfect. Not, yeah, not just a, a dedicated person, but somebody that's a years of experience right. in uh, working with Gen Con and playing himself. So. I know, literally the biggest like board game, TCG, yeah. whatever, like nerd tabletop gaming event of the year. That's pretty dang good, man. I think that's, yeah, that's a great step for WizKids, uh, huge step for WizKids kind. Um, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I, I genuinely think that like everyone wanted it to move in an organized play direction. We have somebody that's their entire position is he's going to be doing organized play um, marketing and ramping up like organized play for play people. So yeah, if you, I think the, the biggest thing is that last paragraph. If you know, or if you are or know a retailer or tournament organizer that would like to ramp up their WizKids events, he'd love to hear from you. So yeah, if you've, you know, I, I don't know if, Obviously, like our podcast doesn't need to reach out to like Majestics or Champion Clicks or like anyone like that because they probably are already on this. But if you're a smaller tournament organizer, if you've run like, you know, multiple like kind of local events and you really think that what you put on is like a good product, reach out to them. Like yeah. they are quite literally asking you to. And if, yeah, if you think that you're like a candidate, if you think, I mean, I don't think I'm a candidate. I haven't made an event in quite a long time, so I'm not going to do that. But if you've ran an event, uh, this goes for like, I mean, maybe even online people. Like, why not? You've ran an event. You've hosted events for people. If you've done that, like Brad, obviously, like one of like the more notable people yeah. that have been doing it for a while, reach out to this dude. And yeah, that kind of thing. Um, I guess this would even go out to uh, the. The uh, tabletop simulator guys, they oh they that'd be cool. and stuff. yeah like, yeah like uh, I mean I don't know if Wizkids is going to give you prizing or anything if you reach out to him, but at the very least maybe Ryan here will shout you out like tell people that like there is a community that's doing X Y Z, and I think that at the end of the day that's the thing that we need the most is we need like publicity for events and right. not everyone's in every single group. I know I'm not in any um. I'm not in any Lincoln groups, which I constantly remind myself is like a bad idea because Lincoln hosts events and I'm never there to like look at like the events because I'm not part of their pages and stuff. But if they like got promoted by WizKids, then I'd be like, oh, shoot, I should probably follow their stuff so that when they have host an event, I only have to drive 45 minutes and I'm there, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. <sighs> Egg. Exactly. So we'll see where this goes and what happens with all of it. Once again, the survey series is all pretty new, so I don't know how long it'll take for a lot of this info to get out. But he says, hey, click the link, answer the survey, and we'll be, uh, we'll be in contact shortly. So fingers crossed this leads to like new and better events than just WKOs. And a lot of people are just like, yeah, I'll just get those back. And it's like, well, what if they were cooler and better? So... Yeah, let's hold out hope for stuff like that. That's what we all say. What if we didn't do the same format every single WKO? And yeah, like, you know, different people would be interested in, in participating in different WKOs because of the formats and stuff. Right, that'd be wild. Some more uh, small updates and everything. We already covered a ton of Masters of Time last week, uh, but this is really cool. The Play at Home kit that is the online exclusive, the retailer. Non, the non-retailer, but the shop.wizkids.com online exclusive play at home kit is going to be Detective Chimp, a character who's not been made in like 15-ish years or something. So that's crazy cool. We get a little bit of information about the figure at the very least, I think, his keywords anyways, because it says Detective Chimp is a fun character with a great sculpt. Perfect for any hero's collection, whether you prefer mystical, animal, Justice League, or detective teams. So... Kind of gives us some some hints there. I don't know when he was on the Justice League, but uh, I'm sure they've had yeah. him be a consulting detective or whatnot. 
So that's pretty cool. Uh, and it's going to contain one Detective Chimp figure, one Legacy card, and one double sided Hero Clicks map. Pretty mm-hmm. simple. 20 Detective bucks. Detective Chimp's. Uh... His deceased run, like, well, I mean, he's not, like, the main character or whatever, but it kind of does follow him as if he's, like, the main character. It's, like, the pet Justice League, the Justice League ah. pets kind of thing. Uh, but Detective Chimp is, like, part of their the crew for that. I really loved that dece- deceased uh, storyline because it's everything in, like, the DC storyline is, like, very, like, macro. Like, we've got to end the plague, you know, like, the, the uh, walker. Yeah. Like, we have to protect everyone. And then Detective Chimp's story is just like, hey, I want to protect this girl, this child. Um, her mom got taken, and I'd like to protect this girl. Can we do that? Can we do mm. that one simple thing? And it's like, it's a very cool story. It's very fun cool. and very simple and very uh, heartwarming. But uh, I shouldn't say heartwarming because I don't think any zombie story is heartwarming really at the end of the day. But um, yeah, <laughs> it's a very cool one. And people were asking, like, why does he look so depressed? Why does he look so dejected in like this like sculpt? And I was like, yeah, maybe we don't know. But maybe it's deceased Detective Chimp. I kind of hope so. It wouldn't make him any different than like a normal Detective Chimp. But maybe it's deceased Ch- Detective Chimp kind of cool well at least something against like monster keyworded stuff or whatever yeah just like a fun little anti-zombie ability little nod to it yeah so i'd be cool with that and it's always just nice to know you know hey guaranteed legacy card in this set so hopefully you know hopefully we find that out soon as well to figure out what figure gets a legacy card in that play at home kit that's what i'm kind of pumped for as well that's pretty much it though for hero clicks news i want to say there's not a whole lot going on kind of just waiting until bigger things like adepticon gamma stuff like that is like coming up kind of soon before we'll start seeing some more stuff we also had a few next to phase previews this week guys shout out to hero Clicks headquarters made a couple of shorts <laughs> Uh, for some figures that are coming up, but we're probably going to wait now, I would say, until the full set is out for us to do a uh, set review, since we've already talked about a bunch of figures. I don't think we'll talk about too many more on the podcast until we get a set review, but if you're interested in the super rare Miss Marvel and the Chase Hulk and She-Hulk, you can go ahead and check out the HeroClix Headquarters channel and find previews to those uh, there. Simple as. Simple as. Though this week, we wanted to take a look, that's right, at a pretty fun, pretty cool keyword. That's right, guys. We're going to delve back into generic gallery. Why should you care? Keywords. 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 So why should you care? Keywords. It's only game. Why did you have to be mad? Celebrity, police, past, and scientist, assassin, soldier, spy, tinker, tailor. No, they, they're not in there, but, you know, you get it. Taking a look at the martial artist keyword. Kind of just looking at what keywords we went through. And I saw we didn't have martial artist yet. And I think martial artist is always a fun keyword to build with. And one that's got... I would say if martial artist is missing anything, because it's, you know, it's all about attacking... I would say it's always been a little tough for martial artists to get good support. So it's always kind of curious to see what you can do with a martial artist team. And so kind of classic generic gallery ways. One of us is going to build a pulp team. And then Simeon, I believe you're building a silver team. Is that right? Yeah. Straight yeah. silver. I mean, technically, it'll also work for like theme because... Um, nothing like on the sideline or main force breaks the keyword like rule, but yeah, it is, it is strictly a silver team. So like if you wanted to make some audibles here and there, switch some figures out for just normal silver, you could do that too. Right on. Perfect. So let's go ahead and then, okay. Also, like always, we usually do a value corner and a hidden gem in these teams. So Kind of save those for last. Maybe, maybe not. I'm building a pulp team. 
And just kind of like I mentioned, I I think there's a ton of great attackers in Pulp. Or not just in Pulp, sorry, but with the martial artist keyword. But I think where the martial artist keyword kind of lacks is in that support. I think it's always been kind of tough to find good support for martial artists. So if that's kind of what this team looks like, then that is a fair takeaway. Because I was also struggling at finding some support. Uh, I'll just get rid of the, the first 100 points to build is the most boring. But it's kind of like... How do you not put this on a pulp team? A uh, hundred points is just going to be the rare death stroke from Batman team oh, up. Sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, it's it's death stroke. There's not much else to say. Dude's got pulse wave with knockback and blades claws fangs. And when he pulse waves, you roll a d6 and you split the damage uh, to the hit characters. It's really good. He's got double stop clicks. He's got all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, he can also kind of cheat with Teen Titans and Justice League keywords and stuff. Not super apparent, but he does have, worth of note, he has in Justice League and Team Player, which is pretty helpful for a lot of stuff we are adding in this build. So that's Deathstroke. Amazing attacker. Bada bing, bada boom. Next up, we have Black Cat. This is probably like the best support that I can find. And also, she has copyable Spider-Man ally. So the Deathstroke, like I mentioned, is now a 50-50 Super Senses at top dial. And then even if he loses Super Senses, he can still have it on a 6. Or we can have him copy a plethora of other team abilities that we have on the team. But Black Cat is bringing us Underworld, which is super helpful since I don't really have a carry on this team, or at least a dedicated one. So she's bringing Underworld, and she's bringing uh, Spider-Man ally to copy and then she has that prop control, which is great. And she has the whole opposing characters in four squares have safeguard friendly props, which means friendly characters cannot prop that character, which is really cool. So super handy, super helpful. The other support I have is I kind of started to just dip into Disney Plus next phase a little early with this build. So we have Lucky. He's a pizza retriever. He's got the pizza object he had to generate it. And a friendly character can go ahead, do a little power action heal them, or actually it's free action, destroy the pizza object, and heal himself a click. So the pizza object is pretty dang awesome. He also has opposing characters, then four squares can't use shape change, super senses mastermind for the defense, plasticity, which is great, and then just straight up enhancement for some of our shooting people. Uh, really dipping into next phase here, we have Clint Barton. This is a figure that I was able to play against this last week. Wow, he is amazing. He's not only a six-range triple target, sees-through characters, running shot RCE, so he's a 12 for three automatically. He's got precision strike. Does not matter in pulp so much, but he modifies his attack and damage plus one when attacking one or more equipped characters. I don't even think you need that too badly, though. Uh, but the coolest thing he has is free, make a range attack using incapacitate. That, combined with sees-through characters and triple target, is just really freaking good. And he actually has Avengers Initiative, so he sees through hindering terrain as well. Just so good that he can just run up, shoot, ping everybody for one damage, and then free in-cap a bunch of people with a 12 attack. Really, really solid. Really like this Clint Barton. Another Clint Barton that I love, who I was like, don't know how this dude isn't on every pulp team ever, is the new Ronin. So the oh, stealth, yeah. the combat reflexes, the dude's got a freaking 19 defense combat reflexes. Stealth top dial is so insanely good. The guy's got a stop click, which is also really, really, really good. Um, yeah, that is a man. That's a, that's yeah. a hard figure to ignore right? if you're dealing with it. But at, at the end of the day, it's like 55 points. And like, hopefully you put him on a map where there's not a lot of hindering. Because if he's in stealth... And he's like, you're not able to shoot through stealth. You just have this 21 defense monster. And, like, m some characters in Pulp can hit, like, a 14 or a 13. But, like, 21, like, that's still, like, a... You yeah. gotta still roll, like, a decent roll against that. So. Yeah. So, he's always got some kind of move and attack with either sidestep. He can always ignore characters, which is great. Double target is awesome with close attacks. Um, but then if a friendly character is KO'd until the end of your next turn, he can use Charge and Flurry. There's not a great way to proxy that on this team, but there's enough characters that you can like kind of throw them up into the front and then almost be like, yeah, no, kill him. No, yeah, kill Lucky. Kill Black Cat. See what happens. Yeah. No, see what happens, you know? So like and that's really cool. When they do, you're almost guaranteed like three attacks in that turn from Ronan. Right. With the uh, his special... Like, they got Thanos, you get me, which is he has blades, steel energy, this is his entire dial. 
Uh, once for when he KOs a character, after resolutions, he can move up to two squares and then make a close attack, ignoring characters. So good, the idea of, yeah, being like a 12-3 or an 11-whatever somewhere in the dial with blades, claws, fangs, just ripping through people. It's kind of freaking awesome, and I love it. Yeah, he's technically best on click two offensively because he could be a 13 for three with blades if he wanted. Um also on click six, he's the thirteen for four at range with two lightning bolts. So yeah, yeah. man, I have the uh, there's like two Hawkeyes in modern right now, and you could use some next phase Clint Bartons, but I think either Avengers Forever Hawkeye are pretty solid. One of them is technically Lester. I do like the use of the uh, common one though, because then he rolls on to if you put him on his last click and heal him too. He goes an 11 for 3 RCE Pensai with Super Senses with a 7 range, 2 targets, which is really good. Uh, so I really like that Hawkeye to like switch in Ronin with. And then the last figure on my team, who I also say is my value corner piece, is Iron Fist. I think you just get so much out of Wheels of Vengeance Iron oh, Fist. Sure. Yeah. He also is a wild card and has super senses on his dial, so you can give him 50-50 super senses thanks to Black Cat. Uh, we've already talked a ton about Iron Fist. I really love this piece. He modifies attack plus two against a giant monster keyworded piece or a colossal with Black Hearts and a few other characters. There's some decent monsters, Black Heart Necron. They're in pulp, so that's always good. Uh, dude's got exploit, precision strike, charge, force blast. So he's charging, punching, knocking you back. And then what I really love is that force blast as free to only target an adjacent character. So he can move up his full speed, knock somebody back, either ping them for a damage. Deathstroke's got outwit. So maybe we could do some outwitting or something there. Something kind of fun. I actually or played him today. and messing people up. Oh, really? Oh, nice. Yeah. So I, I played a, it wasn't a, a theme team. It was just, it was just a pulp team. It was 400 points pulp, and I played this Iron Fist with a handful of other stuff. I'm not going to get into the whole team, but this Iron Fist really shined at, like, I played him at 30. I think at 75, like, amazing. Like, very, very solid attacker. You could potentially have a 14 for 3 with exploit and knockback. Uh, and with, like, the right combo of figures, like, that can be really crazy. But I played him at 13 just for, like, the simple fact where occasionally... I really wanted to, I played Dracula, and I really wanted to, like, knock people oh, towards nice. Dracula. And the fact that he can just move eight squares, knock somebody three away from him, it was, it didn't happen as often as I'd like, but it happened often enough where I was like, or, you know, if if somebody has, like, Mastermind, like Ray Shal Ghoul is, like, another pull yeah. piece that people like, uh, you master, or you, like, knock back his mastermind piece or you knock himself back you knock ray shall ghoul back and then he can't mastermind anyone because he's like out in the middle of nowhere that kind of stuff very utility piece for 30 points i think every pulp team should think about putting iron fist on it for the simple fact of how good moving eight squares and knocking somebody three squares back is like there's a lot of a lot of angles and elements to be thought of with that and i mean I really like the idea of him with, uh, I think, yeah, Blackout, where, like, you can... This is, like, a very situational thing, but if you can, like, get somebody positioned up against the wall and you, like, put the Blackout token under them and then you can... They can't reduce damage and you just, like, Force Blast them with your charge. Like, charge, Force Blast, knock them back. So they take two plus the knockback and they can't reduce any of it and then you Force Blast is free. It's very situational, but I really like that combo. But I think... On his own, Iron Fist just does so much for 30 points. Like, yeah, no, absolutely. I didn't even use his team player. Like, I didn't even build the team good enough to, like, have his team player active, and he still was doing good work. 100%. And that's what I also really like about him. And when it comes to, like, a pulp piece that you feel like you need to include on every pulp build, that's why I kind of chose him for value corner, because compared to a lot of those other pulp pieces that feel like, gotta have him, He's actually really, really cheap, and I really like that. I think that's super helpful. So kind of keeping in mind, Simeon, uh, some of the crazier uh, must-play pull pieces, how much do you think old Iron Fist here is clocking in at? I got to like, keeping in mind most Wheels of Vengeance stuff is like a higher, like a higher rarity kind of like on its own. Um, 
I'm going to say with the glow effect, with the pulp potential, I think everything's stuck a little higher. I'm going to say $2.50. It's actually really close. Okay. Actually, a little close. He's a little more than that. He is two ninety nine. So, you, so Iron Fist here is about three bucks. All right, that seems but again, fair, though. You yeah. know, for this good of a rare, I feel pretty good with that. You know, and I definitely think with how much Wheels of Vengeance was, you could get like some double rare boosters and stuff like that. That it might be easier to find and maybe ask some people. But yeah, like three bucks on cool stuff, Inc. Not bad. So. Check it out. It's certainly no like how Blackheart is sold out everywhere or Orb's a little more expensive and stuff than that. So a little three bucks. Not too bad for a little pulp piece Iron Fist here. That is my pulp build and my value corner. Simeon, what are you building with? And what's your team looking like? Yeah, so I'm just building silver, which we're going with the 24 or 2024. Jeez. Uh, part of me wishes it was still 2024. Um, you're going with the 2024 silver list, which has a there's a caveat on it when you're building, and that's half your build has to be. Let's see, half your build has to be silver now, I believe. Um, right. So for a 300 point team, which is what I built to, half of it has to be silver. And the other half can be modern. So you're really like limited with like what modern you can do. Silver, you could do like you could do the whole 300 points silver, but it's really like the modern amount. This team came out to 135 points for modern. So this is technically a silver themed team, but you could mix and match if you just wanted to do a 300 point silver team that didn't follow this keyword, if it wasn't like a theme team. You could break a few of these characters off. Uh, I'm going to go with my kind of like clutch pieces first. So I'm going to start with like the tech stuff before I get into the attackers. Number one from the next phase set, 007. I think a lot of people are going to overlook this. But Kazi, 007 common. He's got Magia Brute and Martial Artist. Four Martial Artists specifically. Um, this guy is kind of nuts. So he's got... The Underworld team ability, and then he's got a trait that is Fat Man Used Cars. Fat Man <laughs> Used Cars. Uh, I just realized Funny, that was like a dig at Kingpin. Um, when a friendly character uses the Underworld team ability, they may carry two characters regardless of point value. So normally, Underworld gives you Passenger 1, but only to carry a character that shares a keyword. Or you get Passenger 2, but only to carry characters that share a keyword with this character and are lower points. So... Kazi has a trait that says friendly characters using the Underworld team ability can carry two characters regardless of point value. So as long as they share a keyword, which this whole team does, uh, they can use they can carry two characters regardless of point value. So that's pretty cool. So I have Kazi. The next up, is I'm trying to make a little bit of a drop off team. So Kazi, the main thing about him is he, he's got eight speed, top dial, four range, two lightning bolts, precision strike. He's got three damage with leadership. He's also the only leadership I put on this team, which a little bit kind of sketchy, but maybe it'll work out. Uh, he's got willpower with an 18 defense. I think he's going to be fine depending on positioning and stuff, at least for the first volley that we throw at him. So main thing is Kazi's a friendly character that can use Underworld, so he can carry two characters regardless of point value. Um, and then... My next character is going to be the other little uh, kind of like linchpin of this. This is uh, Duke Thomas from the Rebirth set. Probably one of the only figures that people think about from the Rebirth set. I would, yeah, I would be willing <laughs> yeah. to say like, uh, what Billy Billy Shazam kind of like that combo. Uh, Duke Thomas. Um, it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty quick handful. Uh, Oz, oh, I would Oz. probably say yeah, definitely, Oz, definitely, yeah. Uh, and maybe I'll in like certain circles, that, like the, uh, the 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 like Green Lantern, uh, Dark Knight, whatever that guy's oh, name is, sure. uh, Black Lantern, Black Black Knight and Lantern, uh, Dark Lantern. Um, yeah, it's it'll come to me, Night Lantern. 
That's what his name is. No, Don Don Baker. Don Sorry, Baker. it took me a second too. I was like, I yeah. wow, I'm spacing. Yeah, Don Breaker. Ah uh, man, that's a figure that I definitely consider in silver every now and then. It depends on like if the meta shifts to be a heavily bystander generation kind of like thing. Don Breaker for sure is like something to consider. Seventy five points, not great, but very good trait. Um, but no, yeah, Duke Thomas is the only thing I'm bringing from Rebirth. Uh, we're equipping him with the Blue Lantern Ring. That is the Empower, if this character can already use Empower when they use it. Also modify the attacker's attack by plus one. So that'll combine with his trait, that is, friendly characters making a close attack, modify attack plus one for each other friendly character adjacent to their target. He also has Empower, so... He's boosting damage plus one. He's boosting attack, hopefully, plus three. If we're, like, you know, circling in, circling the wagons in on, like, one opposing character. We're hopefully getting a plus three on somebody. And we're probably getting plus two damage. uh, Just because we've got Duke Thomas. And then next up, we have Hand Ninja. So this is from ADW. Because we need 150-ish points from silver uh so hand ninja is unique modifier if hand ninja occupies hindering terrain he can use empower so we've got a secondary empower only if he's in hindering terrain the only way that we can guarantee that is by using black widow here so it's not really black widow that's doing it but we're using the abpi black widow for one big reason, she's got shape change and stealth traded. She has plasticity and sidestep on her top dial, but we're playing at 30 points where she will have one click of combat reflexes and free choose an adjacent character and a standard defense power. Until your next turn, the chosen character can't use the chosen defense power. So this is a way to get rid of a defense power from somebody that has protected Ooh. outwit or has like power cosmic, uh, what have you. We're equipping her, so she has shape change and stealth traded, but she's just sidestep, 2 damage, 10 attack, and that special combat reflexes with like a 17 defense, so she's not doing a whole lot for 30 points. She does ignore characters, so she can kind of get into spaces that they normally wouldn't want her into, but we're equipping her with two rings, the Nightbringer, which gives her stealth, smoke cloud. She already has stealth, but smoke cloud and then smoke cloud is free, but only to generate two markers. So she can always be in stealth if she needs to be. She can always put someone else in stealth if they need to be. And then because of the Silver Age errata for these, she can be assigned two of the Mandarin rings. So the second one we're going to equip her with is the Zero Ring, which is barrier incapacitate and then barrier as free, but only to generate one marker. So we're going to block off line of fire to her while keeping her in stealth while maybe using smoke cloud to get somebody's like attack down or whatever, put them in like a smoke just for the fun of it kind of thing. Um, maybe we do double smoke and then we sidestep back and put a barrier in front of black widow just to keep her safe. She's also wild card, which honestly, um, yeah, so she can wildcard Kazi's uh, underworld and carry some people. Um, literally, like she can carry anyone on the team because she has wildcard and underworld. So that allows her to carry two people, which with seven speed sidestep, that gives her a nine square reach. And they can drop them off in square ten. Not too bad. And then finally, uh, we already talked about the hand ninja who can be in a hindering terrain so if he gets put in one of those like smoke terrains he'll be in stealth if he gets put in a hindering terrain he'll be able to use empower pretty solid for 15 points and then i'm giving him the space gem that gives him a plus one speed so he's going to be at a nine speed and then passenger two which it's phasing teleport passenger two i think that that's probably fair enough he can carry up either Black Widow and Lucky or, I don't know, Kate Bishop and Spider Hammer Eye is probably the best options. It doesn't really matter because Kazi lets us carry anybody that shares keywords for any point value. But uh, we've, we need as many taxis as we can get, and there's not a lot of taxis, like mainstay taxis, for the martial artist keyword. So 
I'll go into the, our main attackers. First up is Kate Bishop, the super rare from Disney Plus. Uh, next phase, and that is the 054 Marksman, Young Avengers, Martial Artist, Spy. She also has team player, so she can copy either Spider-Man team ability from spider Hammerai, who's also on the team, or she can copy Underworld. She can copy, uh, I think, Hydra from Hand Ninja, so there's a few options. We can get a couple Hydras off if we need to, which, again, Hydra is the minus one defense for range attacks. If they're, It's basically police team ability, minus one defense if the target's within range and line of fire of this, this character, which is good for Kate Bishop because I don't know if you guys watched our unboxing at Champion Clicks or the uh, Battle Royal that happened a day or two later. But uh, this Kate Bishop kind of does some work. So she has two traits. The first one is a plunger arrow. When Kate Bishop equips a trick arrow equipment, she may set an additional trick arrow card face down for that equipment. So you just get four trick arrow equipments. I'm not going to read all of them off, but trick arrows can do a lot of extra damage to adjacent characters they can do a lot of like placing effects a lot of actioning up of characters they can do a lot of stuff there's two there's seven of them i'm not going to go over all of them because they're all kind of insane uh one of them unequips people one of them just does like extra insane amounts of damage uh she also has a trait that is ringing the bell which is like the first episode of the Hawkeye series. If right. Kate Bishop has not been moved or placed this turn, she has improved targeting, hindering, elevated, and characters, and modifies her range plus two. So if you have her in position and she hasn't been moved or placed this turn, she has eight range and then sees through hindering, elevated, and characters, which is an insane amount of reach. Uh, top dial, she has... Range combat expert with an 11 for 3, so she's more than likely a 12 for 4 most of the time. And then she has, with that, a flurry of arrows attack power, which is precision strike, and then range, have range, make two range attacks. So what's fun about this is if she hasn't been moved and you use this capital range attack... You have a plus two to range, so you have it to three, and then you plus two to a five. You ignore elevated hindering and characters, and you can make two range attacks with five range, uh, two targets. So pretty fun, pretty good. I would say this is a figure for super rare. I think something that people should keep an eye out on. Uh, 65 points obviously gets the trick arrows for free, which, again, I think those trick arrows are just kind of nuts. Um, but this Kate Bishop is going to stay back on this team. She's going to not be carried up with like the rest of them. She's going to be shooting through the people that go up, uh, probably like turn two or three after they get carried up. She's going to be blasting through the characters that were carried up and just deal a ton of damage to the characters that, uh, haven't broken away. All right. And that takes us to our, our huh. main our main kind of uh, inspiration, the guy who's going to be holding down the fort for this carry-up team. And this is Spider Hammer Eye. He is a chase, of course, but he is a silver chase. So a little bit of a, you know, little leeway on, like, his price range. He has a 12 attack for three with Precision Strike Leadership, uh, which is actually our second leadership because Kazi also has it. So we have two leaderships on this team. But we're going to start Spider Hammer Eye He's normally 60 points. We're going to start him at 70 because he's going to get the power gem. So obviously when establishing theme teams, characters on the starting force with martial artists get spider family. This is already a spider or this is already a martial artist keyword theme team. So it getting spider family doesn't do anything for it. You could do that if you really want to. I don't think it doesn't do anything on the specific team, but I mean, if you want to do something with like a, a Mary Jane or something in silver, uh, maybe, uh, he has traded Blades, Claws, Fangs, and then at the beginning of the game, you choose an opposing character or team ability, and then free, make a close attack, but only to target the chosen character or the character using the chosen team ability. 
a character cho- using the chosen team ability. So if they are running a theme team, if they're all like Avengers or they're all like Bat Family or something, and you choose that team ability, you'll be able to do this free attack every turn. Uh, if it's just like you have one character that like you really need to take care of, he's going to be a 13 for 5 when he attacks, which mm. will be kind of insane because... You combine that with the Black Widow, who's going to get rid of a defense power. Uh, chosen character can't use that chosen defense power. That's going to be probably enough to put most characters down. And then he also has, of course, the 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 other trait, the call and help from the Spider-Verse, is not worth mentioning because there's no one else with that Spider-Man family keyword. All um, alone. So sad. Yeah, but he, the Bushipdo, Bushipdo honor... Uh, Defense power is combat reflexes if spider hammer eye is adjacent to exactly one opposing character and neither of those characters adjacent to a, to any other characters. Other characters can't be moved or placed to either of them and can't target either of them. So, very interesting, very good power. I've played against this guy enough times where I know that the back in the day he was formidable for 60 points. I think at 70 points... With the uh, the power gem makes him a really good drop off and try and deal with me or don't. He also has the Spider Man team ability, which gives him super senses on a six. If they try and kill him and they only knock him to click five or six, then suddenly has a fifty fifty rollout combined with shape change. So not good, not good if they do that. But I think that'll keep him from uh, potentially deciding to attack him. Um, obviously Black Widow getting rid of like the standard defense powers I think is like a real big deal Duke Thomas he's going to be boosting everything so hopefully Spider Hamrite is uh, Spider Hamrite by himself with the power gem is going to be a 13 for 5 but hopefully he's more along the lines of like I don't know a uh, 15 for 5 or Duke yeah. Thomas giving him empower with the blue lantern ring Spider Hamrite is more than likely a uh, a fifteen four six or you know better, um, and then we not for nothing we do have that like uh, that stealth and that uh, hindering bonus that we can get from the Nightbringer rings. So I think that this team is like really fun. I don't know if it's something that would break into the meta. I think in silver specifically, one of my biggest issues was. I feel like the the green arrow from Elseworlds like should have a spot on this team, but this is more of a drop off team, so he just doesn't. Uh, whereas Kate Not Bishop, sure. Kate Bishop being able to do the double attack just feels so much better because she can move up, so she can move four squares and then range six, and she can also copy Underworld to do that. She can copy uh, the Spider Hammer as a Spider. Spider-Man team ability, so she has a 50-50 super senses if she wants. She can copy uh, Black Widow, or not Black Widow, jeez, um, Hand Ninja's Hydra, so that she can modify a target's defense minus one for range attacks. There's a lot of things. Obviously, uh, Duke Thomas only works with close attacks, so maybe you know, turn one, we're probably carrying up. We're making a free attack with Spider-Ham. Where before we're doing that, we're outwitting something with Black Widow. Um, Lucky is getting rid of opposing characters' shape change within four squares. And then also, Lucky has the uh, generated pizza object. We already went over all this, but. Right. Yeah. Like the getting rid of shape change, and then Black Widow can get rid of like, either Super Senses, Impervious, whatever they might have. And regardless of cosmic energy or anything like that. And then we've got two sources of Empower, and we've got um, a huge stat boost with Duke Thomas and the Blue Lantern Ring. So I think Spider Hammer is definitely hitting somebody for a lot of damage right off the bat. And then Kate Bishop is following up with the ignoring characters uh, elevated and hindering and just blasting somebody for probably four but uh, maybe she's using one of the trick arrows to blast a few people and drop like the you know two the big arrows to uh, everyone too adjacent. Dangerous. Yeah, yeah. The, like, there's so many of those like 
crazy arrows that they have. Right on. I like it. I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's pretty cool. I don't know how well Silver Age would treat it, but it's pretty sweet. Yeah. I I think that That's it's definitely uh, more of like a nuanced team. I don't I don't think yeah. martial artists is a little harder for Silver Age because there's just a lot of good stuff, but I think I think Kate Bishop being like a pseudo carnage surfer and then yeah. Spider Hammer I being like a hey, I just dropped this guy in front of you and he's got uh, 13 for 5 on his own, but like the people next to him give him a, you know, uh, 15 for 6. Like that just kind of just deletes some Pretty stuff. good. Yeah, that's pretty dang good. <laughs> good. Well, right on. Guys, if you liked either of Simeon or I's martial artist teams, go ahead, let us know. Feel free to message the show if you play either one. And then let us know who your favorite martial artist is or who you have been building with. Let's go ahead and finish up the show with a couple of listener questions here. Coming from our Discord, once again, shout out Patreon plug here. We're giving away some cool stuff here in February as well as very, very soon, probably tonight. I'm going to finally do it. I promise people uh, I'll post pictures of the new cool T-shirt that we have. If you join the $25 or higher tier, you'll get this T-shirt, get a new shirt every month. And we just try to keep making these uh, T-shirt designs every about year or so. We come up with a pretty cool T-shirt design. Might ramp it up if there's a lot of interest, if we can find some people to like work with to help make new cool t-shirts. But this one's really cool. Trust me, you're not going to want to miss it. Also, joining the Patreon, just $5 and above, gets you access to our Discord where people have a grand time. I say it every week, and people tell me every week that this is like one of the best Heroclix Discords out there that you can be in. It's great. We have a great community. We have a great couple of people that are really active and chatting and everything, as well as a lot of people that just do some cool team building and just have a fun time. So it's a great Discord. It's great value. Feel free to consider supporting us if you enjoy what we do. And all the content that we make, go ahead and feel free to support joining us on Patreon. There are dozens of us. Dozens! So, questions from the show. Alex the Enchanter asks, Would WizKids ever make legacy cards for horror clicks or sports clicks in order to bring those figures into hero clicks? More importantly, could they? Uh, Probably not. I mean, right? Like, they probably shouldn't. I also don't know where the lines would be if they would even be allowed to bring in here like horror clicks or sports clicks like also the dials are just straight up not hero clicks stats and powers yeah i think either of those the one of the biggest things is horror clicks dials and like the powers are not the same they're not meant to be the same so like the red power on attack for horror clicks is not blades claws fangs so, like, a character right. that has that just doesn't make quite the same amount of sense. Um, as much as I'd love my 3x6 Cthulhu to, like, be back in modern with a legacy card, as much as I'd love, like, the Alien Queen, the, like, Alien vs. Predator, the, like, Horclix sculpts are so cool. They're, like, just insane. Like, the radioactive cosmonaut, like, the skeleton cosmonaut dude, I love that sculpt. I would so much rather them do re-sculpts like a brand new set than do a legacy card set because it would just be insanely hard to do a one-to-one where like their powers were not the same. Like their red power for attack was like, if you were attacked last turn, you are bleeding and you have blood rage. Like it wasn't Blades Claws Fangs. It was like blood rage gives you a plus one attack and you're angry. So be angry huh. and attack with what plus one like I, I don't know it was something like that though and like as much as i love like the sculpts i just I, i'd love for them to do cthulhu i'd love for them like but like somebody on hc realms like a long time ago did a cthulhu mock-up of what it would be in like hero clicks version and if you're playing that mm. then like that's fine just like you know house rule it i don't think they're ever gonna legacy card it i don't think there's a reason to and Personally, I don't really want them to. Even though I own a lot of horror clicks, I own some sports clicks. Sports clicks is like another thing. 
that was like batting average versus like pitching speed versus like how good I am yeah. at like running to catch. Like the numbers aren't the same. They don't make any sense. Uh, and at the end of the day, it would just be a bunch of people with like bats and balls that wouldn't really make sense to go against superheroes. If they were going to do it, I'd love for them to do it as like its own box set, like a new version, new print. I don't want it to be done as like a legacy version, though. I think that would just be bad. Yeah, I agree. I'm 100% with you there. Ah, then Alex asks, and this is a very unique one. If you made a Heroclix version of Queen's Gambit, how would you make it? And then you kind of helped uh, figure some things out here. Not necessarily was Alex going for like the Queen's Gambit maneuver in chess, but the show Queen's Gambit starring Anya Taylor-Joy. And then that's all I know about that show. So, <laughs> and then I also don't know pretty much anything I haven't about it yet, so, so no spoilers. So, uh no spoilers, thank you. Yeah, about about chess. I don't know how chess ends, so don't spoil chess for me. Um, no, I, I haven't finished Queen's Gambit. Um, what I will say in, like, absolutely spoilers alert for Queen's Gambit, the sh- TV series, um, I know her dad leaves and her mom dies. And also prior I mean, to that, she just, was like an orphan. So she that's like, was just every superhero origin. Come on now. Yeah, she, she was what like are, adopted and then that happened. So it was like, oh, dang, yeah, yeah, like extra dead parents. Dang, that is a bummer. Ugh. Yeah. Um, I will say like her dad, whatever his name was, doesn't really matter. He's not an important enough character. He could be like sideline active, some sort of like stat bump because he mails her a check once in a while so like oh. that's fine there you um go. every three turns gain four victory point gain five <laughs> victory <laughs> points checks from dad i don't know exactly how you would do like the main i don't i don't even know her name like the the main lady from queen's gambit um like she is she's the queen's gambit like that you know the show is based around her so i don't think the names especially like matters at least not to me. Um, but there's a few interesting things about her. One is that she like visualizes like the chess pieces moving okay, in like, like in her head, like on a wall or whatever. She like kind of, it's a little like bit drug induced and a little bit, you know, just like psychosis or whatever. But she does like visualize like all the moves ahead of time. Um, and so something that can do that something that can like visualize your opponent's moves ahead of time whether that's like a fancy version of prob control or like a mr oz like when you place a character i get to place it like you know in like a different square kind of thing something like that i could see that um i really don't think there's a reason to even include her mom in like hero because uh her mom kind of doesn't do anything <laughs> like her, yeah, her adopted enough. mom, at, at least uh, kind of sort of just uh, sucks the whole show until, oh, uh, no, no. until she's no longer in the show. Um, oh, when she's in the orphanage, the dude that teaches her chess, he's like the janitor. Uh, he's like this like big dude. Oh, well, he looks big because it's like a child that he's playing against with chess. Right. And, uh, so like yeah, you could have like some sort of mentor kind of like thing. Wouldn't some necessarily be leadership, active, but like maybe yeah, some like TK, some like nudging in the right direction, some like free placement okay. kind of stuff. I don't know. The show like legitimately, I I feel like the show is literally just main character lady, uh, few opponents that actually kind of make sense, which is like three. And then, like, that's basically, like, I don't, I think it's a four-figure set. Like, you don't really need the parents and, like, the janitor and, like, the, you don't need the child version of her that, like, tries to eat a whole jar of pills at some point. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that's, that's a weird scene, but, like, that's, that's a scene that there is. Queen's Gambit is weird. It's good, but it's weird. Yeah. Well. Also, maybe, maybe a hot take. I feel like Anna Joy's eyes are too wide apart. I feel like she might be an alien that is uh, 
trying to convince us that she's human, trying to condition the humans to believe that uh, this is what uh, peak human uh, beauty looks like. And I think that uh, we should reject that version of beauty. I, oh. I don't think wide Man. eyes is like the, the version of beauty that we need to accept. Wow. We, yeah. Wow. Where uh, is this coming from? Man, wow. I, um, Scarlett Johansson also also no. alien. Say psych right now. You've just named like nope. two of the most beautiful Hollywood actresses. That's what they want you to think. They want you oh, to believe they're gosh. beautiful. Oh my gosh. Calder, they're trying to make us <laughs> think these wide eye alien women are beautiful. I so can't. when the aliens what? come down, we're accepting of their beauty. Oh but my that's gosh. The thing. We need to prepare. We need to be prepared for their unbeautiful are, faces. What are we doing? What is this, Simeon? What? I'm fine. Uh, okay. I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just checking everybody nowadays. It's kind of like... This I with, wild. I with alien oh, abduction wild. situation. I mean, you can't be too careful with these. People, I, like, uh, I will... I, I will move on. Uh, Luke, Luke, Luke asks, we've seen all those Instagram posts of you can only pick five stories going around, right? I actually don't know if I have, but nope. I will say for this instance that sure, yeah. yeah. I don't, um, I don't gram. Uh, where you have to make hard calls, selecting your favorite bands, movies, childhood. I guess I've seen these, like pick five movies or whatever. And childhood shows to stay in existence and doom the rest. Well, it's that, but in Hero Clicks, this is Team Ability Edition. And he actually, so nicely enough, uh, sends us a link to a list of all Marvel and DC team abilities. So I, he says choose five. So, so I'm going to say that this means across both Marvel and DC. Right. Yeah. If it's, so, across, if it's across one, yeah. then that counts for both. I so think... Like, I think that, Cosmic energy is number one for me. Tough. That, that okay. has to survive. Like that can't. Yeah, cosmic I mean, energy just the game. needs sure. to be in existence. Yeah, if you want to rattle your top five, go for it. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll say cosmic energy, absolutely number one. Um, I'll say Hydra, absolutely number something. Not number. Does that two. count? Will we count Hydra we're PD we're as that with one PD? Yeah. Okay. So that counts with PD. Which crosses with DC. I don't know if DC has a alternate version of PD. They don't. They do okay. not have so, Hydra yeah. or PD besides just normal PD. Yeah. So Hydra. Where do they have Masters of like, Evil? Sadly, three versions. I guess. Uh, yeah, it's PD for DC, PD for Marvel, and Hydra for Marvel. Uh, I just love being able to reduce defenses for range. Uh, but yeah, cosmic energy that has become ubiquitous between the two. So we'll go with that. Um, gosh, I I really want to say X Men, but kind of just don't care if X Men and Teen Titans survives. So no, like I I'm not agree. gonna say X Men and Teen Titans can go. Uh, Underworld, that's number gotta, three. Gotta have it. So okay. yeah, we've got cosmic energy. We've got Hydra PD. Hydra PD slash PD Underworld. And then we've got Underworld team ability. Yeah, that's so. Underworld is number three. Uh, we'll do Spider Man Wonder Woman number four, just because that's ubiquitous. That's uh, makes enough sense. I feel like a certain character should just do really well on super senses, and it makes a lot of sense for certain Spider Mans. I really hate it. I really hate facing off against the Spider Man that is like succeeds on a you know three through six and like i just never hit it i hate that but it makes sense um gosh next last one here so we do we did cosmic energies one number one hydra pd number two spider-man wonder woman number three um is there a marvel outsiders there's no marvel outsiders there is no marvel outsiders wow i mean Uh, guardians of the galaxy Guardians is like not really though, just for themselves. That's actually that's yeah. actually just Marvel Watchmen is truly what Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, that's, is. that's true. Yeah, Guardians. Yeah, it's interesting, and I I kind of hate 
Minions of Doom. Kinda hate Skrulls. Skrulls is fine. It's like essentially Spider-Man, but it should be more equal than Spider-Man because at least you can target somebody else. Uh, Ultimates, it's just Superman team ability. Shield? Is there a shield in DC? There is not a shield in DC. I guess team player would be like the next one, right? Like you yeah, can't, yeah. Cop the copyable team abilities because because Spider Man and was there a DC Spider Man? I don't. I don't Wonder think there was Wonder Woman. Was Wonder Woman team ability Spider Man? Yeah, it's Spider Man. Uh, not not the super sense one. Like the uh, the free choose a team ability. One. Oh, a uh, calculator. Calculator, yeah, calculator, that's still yeah. technically a DC team ability. Yeah, it's not used at all, but yeah, yeah it's not listed here. But um, yeah, we'll say we'll say uh, team player is number five because I okay, I feel like yeah, obviously being able to like team player is very good, but only if somebody on the team has one of the really good team abilities and I didn't list off like the best versions. So I really number five should be Avengers JLA because that's like plus one tack and that's just insane. Yeah. Um, but team, team player being able to like pick even like the bad ones. If I have a team player and a defender and I'm like, eh, I have like this person with like a 15 defense, but they've got team player suddenly they have an 18 defense because I've got defenders like that's what I'm copying or like suddenly I have a five or a a four six what four through six super senses because I'm going to copy spider-man like I feel like team player is like better than all of the other random ones yeah what's your five uh for my list I'm probably not going to go with the ones that would actually make the game uh, balanced and better. I think I'm just going to go with like my favorite team abilities that if they no longer existed, I'd be very sad because of just the mechanics I like and what feel, they do. Yeah, I feel like Brotherhood um, would be like sad if I'm if I'm not able to do Brotherhood, that'd be sad. And the there is a DC counterpart. For yeah, there is. Yeah, Injustice that's League. Yeah, the Injust- Yeah, like that's actually like if this character doesn't do that, that's kind of like. It sucks. Yeah. Because it'd be super cool if they did that on the rare chance that they do that. Right. I mean, yeah, it's, it is still like an if the, the 10 or higher, but yeah. No, I think number one's got to be Avengers Justice League. It's just a recent change, and I would hate to have it snuffed, taken away from us so soon, you know? So Avengers Justice League is just instantly my number one pick. Uh, my number two is Shield. I love Shield team ability. I love using it. I built so many teams with and around the shield team ability. It's just like it's range attacks. It's first full and I love it. And I just, I super enjoy shield. I got to have it. Uh, Next up green lantern is the green lantern core team ability inherently broken. Uh, Yes. Yes, it is. Green lantern core is, is such a busted team ability. Um, But I love it. Be able to carry more than like, Every like, like special power four, that we've seen is like four. He's like the like, max. Yeah, yeah. Like, we've never seen like a carry eight. Underworld is carry two with a very specific with the claws. Yeah. yeah. So it's like it's carry. I mean, it's carry one with a very specific thing, but carry right. two with even more specific. And then Green Lantern is literally just. Are you, are you next to me? Yeah, dude. Wow. Here we go. Like it's so, it's insane. Such a Nintendo, but I love it. Nintendo oh, yeah. insanity. Like here <laughs> we go. Like oh my gosh, yeah, Mario, oh, carry geez. everybody. It, that's how it feels like. It feels <laughs> insanely like. Oh, that's funny. Just here we go down the pipe. Gosh, it's hilarious. Green Lantern team ability. Uh and then number four has got to be Outsiders. I love Outsiders. Yeah. A lot of the same reasons you we kind of talked about it just a little bit. I just yeah. love Outsiders. It's a fun team ability. I've kind of enjoyed building teams <sighs> around it. Using I faced it. off against Outsiders today, and I was like, "Oh yeah, not like a full team, but it was like the like, we were playing Pulp, so it was like the Martian Manhunter, Mon- oh, Martian sure. Manhunter from uh, Batman team up." That uh, you just cannot attack, or do you? You can't do anything unless you have like pulse wave or poison. 
That's like literally the only way to get him off click one. And so if he decides to outsiders you, you're just like, well, that's that. And yeah. there's no Marvel version of that. So it just, right. yeah. It's just like, I guess no combat reflexes on Red Widow, which is so kind of her whole thing. Right. Like, it's super good for her. I, I kind of really wish she had that. You know, That'd be cool. That would be neat. Would okay, be really, no really cool if you let me have my powers on my character, please. Ugh. And then last one's team player. Uh, again, I just don't, don't know if I can live without team player. Just I think just gotta have it. Just yeah. gotta freaking have team player, man. Like probably should have put. I probably should have put that number one because I, I genuinely think, even though today was like the first day that I ever played a team where. Uh, not the first day ever, but the first day, first time I'm on the podcast talking about a team that I played where uh, I had two figures with team player and I had literally zero team abilities that they could copy because it was two figures with team player and then one figure with mystics. So they couldn't even copy it. Um, but no, like team player plus shield is something we've talked about where that's insane. Oh yeah, that's team good. player plus Spider Man, team player plus Scrolls, depending on like what powers they have on dial. Team player plus Police Hydra Shield. Team player plus Shield is insane. Yeah, yeah. Being able oh. to copy a plus one to range, insane. Underworld. I mean, we talked about that earlier on the episode where like certain characters on my. Uh, my team had like Kate Bishop had a uh, team player and she could copy shield or not shield. Um, she could copy uh, the gosh underworld to carry um, and Hydra and stuff like that. Like, yeah, there's team player is kind of insane as far as like the utility of it. And I really don't think there's, there's not enough like defensive uses of it. Like X Men, Fantastic Four, Defenders, and then on the DC side, the opposite end of that is like Suicide Squad. Technically, yeah, I can't imagine a single yeah, person that yeah. uses that. But yeah, Suicide Squad technically Wonder Woman ally is like the same as Spider Man. Uh, the JLA, yeah, Justice Society. So JSA. Uh, that's the same as defenders. So like you can use like the defend, but only for other characters that have that team ability. Hyper time is like the one DC power that is not applicable to any Marvel team ability. And so, yeah, it wouldn't work at all. Like hyper time is uncopyable, which sucks, but it yeah. is technically like top tier power. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. just, it's used so infrequently. Yeah. Pretty much never at all most times. A character that's trying to get adjacent rolls a one or two to get adjacent to a hyper time character, they don't get to be adjacent to them. So it's like right. they instead of like a five six like normally would succeed, on a one two, they just like don't succeed on becoming adjacent to you. And then it's like, uh what do I do? <laughs> it's good. It's iffy. But it's good. Yeah. So, you know, just kind of the way kind of the way it goes. The I would say, yeah, some of the more like more obscure and off team abilities just have such specific uses that they're not necessary for like a type of this scenario anyways, a pick five, the only team abilities that exist. You know. Right on. The last question we have here, this one was asked almost a full week ago before we knew what the play at home kit was but tyler asked will we be getting an online exclusive play at home kit for masters of time if so who do you th who do you think slash want the figure to be now we know that the figure is that detective chimp figure but let's just say before it was detective chimp who would you say you want it to be simeon or would you prefer a different figure besides detective chimp or we could also kind of go this route uh, what do we want the legacy card to be in the play at home kit? Man, I I truly wish the legacy card would also be Detective Chimp. Oh, uh, for what for Doubling whatever that's down. worth, I I kind of wish that we would just get 
technically two new detective chimps because I feel like we haven't had enough detective chimp in like quite a long while. But if I'm basing my thoughts off of this detective chimp being like online exclusive, I don't know. I think I would go with Ace the Bat Hound or I think Ace the Bat Hound would be my first guess. And then Ace the Bat Hound, maybe, maybe Crypto would be like an option. But like, yeah, like, I don't think we're going to get like the DC 75 as like the uh, legacy. I feel like if we get anything, it's going to be a figure that works with Detective Chimp. And the last I comic know, that I, think... I read with uh... Detective Chimp was like the all Justice League like pets kind of like thing okay so i think it's going to be a pet I'm trying to think since the last ones were kind of seemingly pretty unrelated though so like the poison ivy one was like not poison ivy related at all it was brimstone right that's true yeah um the like dc what was that batman team up was just like that um it was just like some batman i want to say i kind of don't remember so I this, say this should be like had some Titano batman or something yeah, I'm thinking maybe they go a colossal because what else? But like we Rick Jones was Adam. one, and Rick Jones had a foldable card, so I feel like they always put like foldable cards in the OP kits or in the play at home kits because if you put a foldable card in like the normal container, like the brick topper for legacy card, it's like oh well, obviously you just got brimstone or whatever, right? Right. Um, so I'm hoping for some DC colossals. Uh, Spectre obviously would be like top choice. That'd be so sick. Um, but probably still, even with a foldable card, could not fit that in there. Maybe a trifold card for the old school Spectre giant colossal. That would be really, really cool. But you saying Adam is correct. Adam is like one of my all time favorite DC colossals they've ever made. So an Adam would be really sick. He is kind of a different version of Adam. So maybe he'd fit with the Masters of Time. War Wheel, I'd also be okay with them giving a legacy card too. There's some improvements that can be made to War Wheel, and that one's cool. And that one also fits the whole, it was in the past for Masters of Time. So if they wanted to do like War Wheel, I could see yeah. that being a possibility. So like that a World War II right. invention thing, um, like weapon of war thing, whatever. Right. It's so like not a modern, not a modern thing, you know. So I would like that. What if we get a uh, legacy card for Kong already? Oh, it's like geez. Kong oh, God. drops, and then we get Legacy Kong. <laughs> Instantly <laughs> Legacy Kong. Yeah, Detective Chimp and Detective Kong. It's Just like the double the, monkey, the double yeah. monkey pack. It's Kong and Detective Chimp slash Baby Kong. So it's like Kong thinks Detective Chimp is Baby Kong, and Detective Chimp has to, like, his his uh whole uh mystery whatever card thing is like proving to Kong that I am not his child. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. That's that's there's no other correct answer. That's just right. That's just right. I mean I, I saw the movie. I saw the preview for the newest Kong versus Godzilla movie and there's there's a baby Kong in there. He's obviously like ten times the size of Detective Jim, but still. Right. It's out in the ether, so. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it. That's our last listener question. So thank you so much to everybody that went ahead and asked those. We always appreciate it. They're always a blast. But that is going to be a wrap this week for the show as we just kind of go through the world of Hero Clicks once again. We got some really fun videos, though, coming up this week. So I just want to plug the YouTube channel really quickly. If for some reason you listen to this, this podcast and you somehow aren't subscribed to our YouTube channel. You've got to be like one of 10 probably uh, because I assume most people are, but definitely go subscribe to our channel. I've got some really fun Adepticon sealed videos coming up later this week that I think are pretty cool. I think people will enjoy these. We just basically go through, we take two boosters in the next phase, one booster of Disney Plus, and we play some sealed games with uh, the Adepticon style super sealed rules. So those will be up on the channel here this coming week. I think they'll be a blast. So go ahead, make sure you're subscribed. Stay tuned for that. And then, I mean, just like always, we have all sorts of crazy cool stuff happening on the YouTube pretty much at all times. 
if these last few weeks didn't just kind of let you know that we do all sorts of awesome things on YouTube, then I don't know what else to tell you because we're just always throwing out amazing content. So, all right, that's all I got, ladies and gentlemen. So just stay on the lookout for all sorts of cool new Hero Clicks content. Yeah. And speaking of cool new Hero Clicks content, you can check out coolstuffing.com where they've got the latest Heroclix singles and sealed products, and using code DIAL5 will save you 5% off. That's D-I-A-L-5. Save you 5% off on top of your savings that you already get. So use that when you use anything at Cool Stuff Inc. You get 5% off in addition to other random stuff. And if you want to go direct to the source, I've heard a sparrow in the wings, in the air, in the trees, say that uh, maybe Dial H in the next like week uh, ish is going to be bringing you a uh, special exclusive, a special. I don't know. I, I don't know what you. I don't know what you call it. Uh, not really a giveaway, like a special uh, discount at uh, shop.wizkids.com. Remember you something something that's interesting at shop.wizkids.com which is a, a place that you should go if you're checking out uh, online exclusive hero clicks like that detective chimp or you're checking out you know things that you really want to get our code doesn't work on pre-orders it doesn't work on specialty figs or iconics but dial h10 will work on certain figures and certain hero clicks so it's always good to try when you're using shop.wizkids.com for Heroclix purchases, no reason not to plug it in. See if it works. It's simple wow. as that. If it does, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But, uh, yeah, check it out. And keep an eye out for our live posts because maybe there's a little bit of a discount thing that's going on. Mm-hmm. Maybe uh, maybe something's going half price soon. Ooh. Who knows what it could be? Uh, oh, gosh. It could, well, it could be anything. <laughs> could be anything, guys. We don't Thank know. you so much for listening to Dial H for Heroclix, everybody. Remember, for all the latest Heroclix news, content, and more, make sure you Dial H. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Heroclix help. Ooh. <laughs> We're not going there. That's how numbers work. Over oh, yeah. six oh, people right. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Well, the rest of